Yes, people, what's happening? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to another Chelsea news video. First things first, guys, make sure you run up the likes. Let's get to 100 likes and subscribe to the channel if you are new round here. And in today's video, we're going to be going through a few bits, including how Chelsea have identified Brentford's set piece coach Bernardo Cueva as a, 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 as a possibility uh, to be a new coach in the club's new set piece department. We're also going to be diving into a lack of accountability from anyone at the club and another couple of failed loans that look like they might be materialising in Amanda Breuer at Fulham and Andre Santos at Strasbourg. So let's dive into it. Obviously, we had reports last week, guys, that um, Chelsea were going to be putting together a new club-wide set-piece department following a, uh, a club review uh, last summer. Now, for me, this is a good thing. Uh, we know for a while now, Chelsea have obviously not had any specialist set-piece coaches since Anthony Barry left to join Thomas Tuchel at Bayern Munich. Um, Maurizio Pochettino and his coaching staff obviously do the work on the set-pieces. Um, and it's fair to say that, you know, we're poor at set plays, defensively and offensively. We're letting in, we're conceding a lot of goals from set-pieces and we're not scoring that many from set-pieces. It just goes to show, you know, set-pieces are so important now. You obviously you see Arsenal took... Man City set piece coach uh, from them earlier in the season, and they're suddenly scoring an, a lot, a lot of goals from set. Please, not going Forest have recently appointed their first ever set piece coach. Uh, Aston Villa, are another club that use one. Um, it's becoming more and more of a thing in football, and anywhere where you can gain an advantage um, is, is is a massive, massive plus, and you can stop your opponents from getting an advantage. I'm all for. Uh, I think it's well overdue for Chelsea to get a set piece coach and overbamp that sort of thing. As I said, our performance from set plays has been too poor uh, for a long time now. And if you can get it right, it's a really, really big weapon that can win you a lot of football matches. Now, obviously, you know, I, I don't know a lot about set piece coaches, but we have the Matt Law article today um, stating that Brent, Chelsea have identified Brentford guru Bernardo Cueva as one of their targets to work in the club's new set piece Department, um, you know, it also goes on to say um, that, you know, Pochettino has been involved in the process of creating the set piece department, although he did himself say uh, before the Wolves defeat that, you know, he dis he, he didn't see the, the need of importance, uh, didn't see the need of specialists last month. So he's obviously changed his tune uh, a little bit on that one. But as of yet, you know, Quaver is understood to be one of the men on the radar of Chelsea. And the Blues, you know, they believe that, you know, Brentford are one of the best examples of maximising set pieces. Um, but it's not known whether there have been an approach or any talks yet uh, for him. Now, I think this is a good thing. Um, if you're good at your job, then I don't care where you come from. I really understand why some Chelsea fans are losing their mind over this. They're, they're going mad. They're complaining, but we're trying to get a set piece coach from Brentford because of the name Brentford. Um, you really could, you really couldn't make it up. You know, Brentford have consistently been one of the best teams from set pieces since they returned to the Premier League. And you know what? Where do you think City and Arsenal got their current set piece coaches from? Arsenal's coach they got from City originally came from Brentford, and currently they have the best set piece, the best set pieces in the league. Um, you know, it's always as if people just complain about anything. Um, you know, and I think also people just would prefer them coming from a big team because they care about aesthetics because it looks better if they're coming from a big team rather than actually, you know, assessing and seeing actually how good they are and the job that they've done. Um, I think if this appointment were to go through, then it would be a good appointment. As I said, I don't know who else is on the is on the short list of potential candidates, but you know, for me, there's nothing wrong with with hiring. Uh, a set piece coach from Brentford. If you know Brentford, as they are one of the strongest teams from set pieces in recent years, then why would you not go there to hire someone who is in charge of doing the set pieces from there? You know, you want to hire the best in class, and this guy would be deemed as one of the best in class. So, whether he's from Man City, whether he's from Brentford, or whether he's from Crystal Palace, or whatever it is, if you're one of the best at what you do, then I, as a fan, am more than interested in seeing you come to Chelsea and try and replicate that job here. I don't understand people that criticise because someone has come from Brentford or Brighton because they're, they're a lesser club, rather than actually looking at the job that they've done and judging them on their ability. This should be something that that we are that we are excited about. Um, 
you know, it, 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 it really should be. And yes, you know, it's something we need to improve upon. It's obviously something we're not going to see materialise for a little while because we're still waiting for that department to be put together. But it's something we can hopefully look forward to in the future. But I mean, that's just my thoughts on Chelsea potentially going after Brentford set piece coach Bernardo Quaver. Um, I think it'd be a good move. Guys, let me know your thoughts in the comments about what you think about this potential move and whether it matters to you where, where people have come from. Because for me, it certainly doesn't matter. All that matters is that you're good at your job. And if you're good at your job, I don't care where you have come from. That is the latest on Chelsea's pursuit of Brentford guru Bernardo Quaver. Um, in other news, guys, it looks like we are heading for another two failed loan moves. There's been a few of those this season already. Um, you know, Andre Santos, uh, first half of the season at Nottingham Forest. And once again, he is uh, having a similarly bad time at Strasbourg. We've got Amanda Broya, who is also struggling at Fulham following his loan in January. Um, and we've recalled Cesare Cassidy, who's having a decent loan at Leicester, to not to, to hardly use him at all in the squad. And then we've got the manager moaning about a lack of options in midfield when he's not using Cassidy, when he sent Santos to sit on the Strasbourg bench. And we've got players like Leo Castledine, Michael Golden, etc. in the academy, but he's choosing not to use them and then makes the excuse that we haven't got enough bodies. No, we do. You're just not prepared to take the risk and use some of these lesser known guys. So, that, for me, again, another lack of accountability, too many excuses being made. But it does highlight, again, that, you know, we it's good that this loan manager is coming in from Swansea. I mean, we, we, he can't start soon enough because the majority of loans this season have been an absolute disaster. You know, if I bring up Andre Santos now, since he's been at Strasbourg, I know it's only a few games, but it seems to be heading in a similar direction. We've pretty much wasted almost a year of his development. He's played more games for like the Brazilian age group teams than he has actually any any club football. You know, he played 10 minutes against Lorient. He played 23 minutes against Brest. And then he's been an unused sub against Lyon and Montpellier. Um, it's not looking good for him at the moment. This is a talented young player, someone who, you know, the club are excited about. He did well in pre-season. I was looking forward to seeing more of him, looking forward to seeing him going to play regular football. I thought the Nottingham Forest loan would be a good loan move for him. It turned out not to be. I thought, oh yeah, Strasbourg would be decent. And right now the guys played just over half an hour of football in four games. That That's not helping his development, really not helping his development, particularly at Strasbourg as well, a club that's owned by Chelsea. You would think they'd have a bit more jurisdiction over, over how many minutes Santos is getting. And he simply isn't getting the minutes. Yes, Angelo's playing a lot more, but Santos is struggling to get in the side, struggling to get minutes. And as I said, it's becoming a bit of a joke how we're being run right now. We've essentially wasted a year of a talented young player's development that he's not going to get back. And we basically set him back a year in, 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 his, in his process as developing into the player we feel that he can develop into. But look, I hope that I'm wrong and this can turn out to be a good loan. But the early signs again are looking like this is going to be another horror loan for Andre Santos. And we really need this guy to play for. We really need this guy to develop. For me, he would have been better off staying at Chelsea, um, training with the, with the team day in, day out. And he could have got some minutes, you know, from the bench at, 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 and been useful for us. But on the flip side, having said that, I don't think the manager would have actually used him anyway. And then he would have just made the excuse he hadn't got any bodies. Um, so, yeah, that for me is a concern in regards to Andre Santos. Amanda Broya, who look, I'm not a huge fan of, don't think he's that great. We tried to sell him in January, clearly loaned him out to try and boost his value because we set a ridiculously unrealistic value. And it appears that he's not boosting his transfer value and we're not currently going to get the money we think we could get for him. Um, you know, on loan at uh, Fulham, it's not been good. The guy's made three appearances and played 40 minutes, yet to score. And his value is doing anything but increase anything but increase um look I, I don't think he's a particularly good player but Moniz's arrival at Fulham has not helped him he's come in and he's scored quite a few goals he's doing well for the team and Broyer is struggling to make an impact he's struggling to get minutes um and it's another problem for Chelsea who purely sent him on this loan because they wanted to increase his value so they could sell him for as much money as possible in the summer and right now it's having a complete opposite effect it's not increasing his value and it could you know, it could potentially be decreasing it uh, even further. And we're just not going to get the money for him that we thought we might get. So, yeah, it's 
Chelsea and loans this season, you know, there, there's not really a worse combination out there right now. We've got to hope that in the remainder of the season, something changes in regard to these two players. You know, yes, there's been a, a few successful, there's been a couple of decent loans, you know, Gabriel's having, having a half decent time at, at Strasbourg, but generally speaking, the majority of the loans this season have just been a, have just been a failure. And it just highlights that we're being run as a bit of a joke of an institution. You shouldn't be getting this many loan deals wrong. Um, I get it that some aren't going to work out, but, you know, more more not working out than than are working out. That is a major, major issue that needs addressing. Thank God there's a new loans manager coming in. Hopefully that department's going to be revamped and we can uh, put this to bed and make sure it doesn't occur next season because loans are really important. For the young players we've got, the young players that we think are going to be good enough for the first team in a few years, the loan development is crucial. And if we're constantly getting that wrong, we're setting these players back uh, and delaying them reaching their potential and potentially not, you know, delaying them developing and, you know, their value's decreasing and we're not going to get a profit for them, which I think is a plan with some of them. So that needs to be fixed up uh, as quickly as possible. But yeah, but guys, that's pretty much your Chelsea news for today. Uh, as always, smash a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you're new around here and make sure you leave your thoughts in the comments below whether you agree or disagree with anything I've said today. And I'll catch you in another one soon. Up the Chelsea and peace out, guys.